Hey everybody. Problem management aims to help you eliminate recurring incidents and minimize the impact of incidents that you can't prevent. Let's take a look at how that works in ServiceNow. I'll start as an agent who's working an incident that's been raised by Beth, who's been having some issues with the HDMI port on her laptop. I think I've seen this before, so I'm gonna create a problem so that the problem team can actually dig into this to investigate it and hopefully provide a permanent solution for this. So there's the problem, but because I'm um, not part of the problem management team, I don't have any permissions to move this problem through its life cycle. Now I'm going to be a problem coordinator from the problem management team who picks up that problem that's been created and not assigned to anybody yet. So I, I select the uh, problem and just have a quick look at some of the details inside of it. And I'm going to start assessing this problem. So as part of that, I need to assign the problem to somebody. So I'm going to go in and select myself so that I can then start working on this problem. So now the problem's in the assess state and it's assigned to me. And at the top of the problem form, you can see the life cycle that we're going to go through all the different stages of this problem. So one of the things I want to do when I'm assessing this is see if there are any other incidents out there that I might be able to add to this problem to keep track of the overall issue that's going on. So I'm going to um, look for a short description that includes HDMI and see if there's any other incidents. Yes, we found a couple of others. So I'm just going to select both of those incidents and then add them to this problem. So now we've got three incidents associated with this problem. So now is a good time to come up to the problem statement and revise that and this description to be a bit more specific about what, what we're seeing for this problem. And what we're seeing is uh, the HDMI port issue is actually affecting multiple Lenovo laptops. So we're just gonna make some edits to the problem statement and to the description to reflect that as we move through the life cycle of the problem. So now I've made some edits, I'm going to save this problem again. And this is a problem that I do want to keep working on. So I'm gonna hit the confirm button to move me onto the root cause analysis phase. And sometimes you can solve this on your own, but sometimes you need help. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a problem task and assign it out to a subject matter expert, and they have the role of um, problem task analyst. So what I'll do is I'll come down to the bottom of the form, find the problem task related list and create a new problem task. And we've got two types, root cause analysis, which I'll use here and general, which is for any other type of task. And because we're doing a root cause analysis task that we're going to assign to somebody else from a different team, I'm going to provide the short description to ask them to investigate the cause of the HDMI port failures that we're seeing on these Lenovo laptops. And if they need more details, they can always refer back to the problem that this problem task is associated with. So now we save the problem task. So I'm going to move this to the assess phase by clicking the assess action. And I'm going to assign this to one of the problem task analysts, those subject matter experts from another team. So as with this case, the subject matter expert is a problem task analyst and they have that role because they don't have any of the other problem management roles. So this is useful if you've got someone from application development or legal or another team that's not actually in your problem team or service desk team. They can come in and view the problem, which is read only for them, but they can actually go down to the problem task that's been assigned to them and actually um, help you provide information for that problem task. So now to save time, we're gonna skip ahead a bit. And what I've done here is I've gone out and found a workaround. I found um, what's causing this, and I've also found a proposed fix for this as well. So now we're just documenting that as part of completing our work. Um, so yeah, this is a, an issue to do with Lenovo as a vendor. Um, I've got the cause notes. Um, basically I checked in with Lenovo and we found out that it was a firmware issue that could sometimes cause some issues. Um, here's the steps that you can actually go through to apply a new firmware to this, which should eradicate this problem. And finally, there's a simple workaround, which is just to restart the laptop for now. So now that I've provided all this information, I can hit OK, and then I've completed my problem task. And because all of my problem tasks have now been completed, me, the problem coordinator assigned to this problem, I get notified that all my uh, problem tasks are done and that's my cue to come back to the problem. So I come back into the problem and I scroll down to the problem task area and I'll open that problem task just to review the work that was done. And I can see that they provided a cause, some fixed notes and workarounds. So I'm going to copy this information back up into the problem as well so that we're documenting it 
um, at the highest level inside the problem itself. So I'm going to skip ahead again quickly to the point where we've copied the workaround and the cause notes back up to the problem and then the fix notes as well. We can actually start fixing this problem. So I hit start fix. And in the fix in progress phase, that's where I would um, define fixes for this problem. So they could include changes. And if you've got them on your system, defects, enhancements, releases and continual improvement management opportunities as well. But what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to communicate back to any associated incidents that we've actually got to work around. And that's useful because any agents who are working on any of those open incidents still will see that there's a workaround available and be able to apply that to their incidents and resolve them much more quickly as well. So we'll skip ahead so that all of the fixes are done. Um, so now we can move the problem on to being resolved. And this is where we could actually wait to see if any new incidents come in. But at some point, you can move this forward to completed. So we've completed the life cycle of this problem. So it's now closed and read only. But what happens if some new incidents do come in? It means you might not have fixed this problem like you thought you had. So at this point, the problem manager has the option to reassess this problem and basically reopen it. So what we're going to do now is go back to that same problem as a problem manager, and we're going to reanalyze this problem. And then what we could do from this point is we could go back through um, the root cause analysis again, or we could actually mark this problem as a duplicate of another one if that's the case, or we could cancel this problem. Or what we're going to do now is we're going to accept the risk of not fixing this problem for now. So in this case, we talked to the business and they told us that we don't have the funds to actually replace these machines. So we'll review this again in six months. And we do have a workaround um, from before, which is to restart in the short term. And so now the problem is closed with the resolution code of risk accepted. And that makes it easier to find these problems later on to follow up on them. By default, we do allow problem managers to reanalyze problems, but we know not all customers want that behavior. So we've got the most common asked um, settings in our problem management properties. So if you don't want anybody to be able to reanalyze a closed problem, you can just come in here and set these three values to nobody. And the same if you don't want anybody to be able to reassess a closed problem task. By default, when you say accept risk for a problem, we, we move to the closed state, but some customers prefer to leave those problems opened in the resolve state, so we provided a setting for that as well. And for the last part of this demo, if you've enabled the problem knowledge integration, you can actually create known error articles, which are a type of knowledge from the problem itself that you can then publish to use for incident deflection. So I'm coming back to the problem again. This time I scroll down and I use the create known error article action. And what this does is creates a draft knowledge article and copies over the short the descriptions, the workaround and the cause from the problem. So I can then save this problem. And we've given the uh, problem team the ability to publish this problem as well. So I can actually come and publish this problem. And we've set the known error knowledge base to auto publish. But if you want to um, have approvals, you can actually set that in the knowledge base itself. Now we've published that known error article, that will actually help because we know it's very likely that other employees are going to hit the same HDMI port issue on their Lenovo laptops as well. So when an employee comes into the portal, they can go to get help and say that they want to create an incident. So they can set the urgency of this issue that they're seeing and they're having issues with their HDMI port. So they type in HDMI port and up pops the HDMI port known error article that we just published earlier. So I can then click on that and I can read the details about that. And in this case, it's a nice simple workaround so I can do that myself. So I can actually deflect this incident so I don't need to create an incident now. But if I wasn't sure how to do the workaround, if it was a bit more advanced, I can actually click on submit to um, save this incident and have the help desk help me as usual. And that brings us to the end of this problem management demo. Thanks very much.